Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Depending on the size of your exchange organization, normally there's a lot of planning that goes into deciding how many Exchange 2010 servers you're going to need in your environment how many processor cores you're going to need on each server, how many roles you want to put on each server, how much memory you're going to need, and how much disk space you're going to need, and also what type of disks you're going to use. And if you want to learn more about the actual hardware planning of your Exchange 2010 environment, please see the training on ITDVDs.com MCTS Exam 70-633 Designing and Deploying Messaging Solutions with Exchange Server 2010 Training. We really go in depth into hardware planning and high availability planning and all that type of planning for your Exchange 2010 environment. But in this training, we're specifically going to go over what's necessary to upgrade to Exchange 2010 and the steps to do that. First of all, at a minimum, your Exchange 2010 server needs to be a 64-bit processor. It's also going to need to run Windows Server 2008 with Service Pack 2 or Windows Server 2008 R2. It's going to need at least 4 gigs of RAM. And this next one's actually pretty important for planning. Uh, if you want to use database availability groups in your Exchange 2010 environment, then you're going to want to install an enterprise version of Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2. And the reason this is important is because if you install Windows Server 2008 standard or Windows 2008 R2 standard, and then put Exchange on top of it, get everything up and running, and then decide you want to use database availability groups, well, there's no way to upgrade your Windows 2008 or Windows 2008 R2 standard operating system to Enterprise. So you would actually have to build another Exchange server and migrate over to it. So that's why that aspect of, it, of this is really important. And if you want to learn more about database availability groups, please see the Exchange 2010 High Availability Training on ITDVDs.com. We actually go into all aspects of high availability for Exchange 2010. Now we can also install Exchange 2010 on a virtual machine, but there are some requirements we need to meet. We can use Windows 2008 with Hyper-V or Windows 2008 R2 with Hyper-V. We can also use Hyper-V Server 2008 and Hyper-V Server 2008 R2, but we can't use something like Microsoft Virtual Server or Microsoft Virtual PC. We can also use some third-party hypervisors, and please see Microsoft's website to see if the hypervisor you'd like to use is supported because the list does change. Two important things to note that if you're using a virtual machine for Exchange 2010, snapshots are not supported, and you cannot use thin disks. Now for our domain and our forest, our whole environment, there are some requirements we need to meet to be able to upgrade to Exchange 2010. First of all, all of our domain controllers need to be at least Windows 2003 with Service Pack 2. So we can't have any Windows 2000 domain controllers and we can't have any Windows 2003 domain controllers that are not up to Service Pack 2. So if we have those, then we need to bring all of them up to Windows 2003 with Service Pack 2 at least. We can have Windows 2008 or Windows 2008 R2 domain controllers, that's fine. We're going to need a global catalog server in every site we plan to have Exchange. And also our forest and domain functional level needs to be at least at Windows 2003. So once we've met all of these requirements and prerequisites, then we're ready to upgrade our Exchange 2003 environment to Exchange 2010.